and you can see that behind us these are called gone. So uh, I know that this collection is actually the uh, largest uh, personal collection in Asia. It's really impressive. Um, Martha, could you explain to our audience what gong meditation, or we call it gong bath sometimes? Mm -hmm. So the original gongs are these. They're called symphonic gongs. They have 12 overtones. Mm -hmm. And when I hit them, they will sound different. Mm -hmm. And you will tell me that you hear lots of different instruments. You might hear harps, you might hear flutes, you might hear... Just like yeah. orchestra. Yeah, and it's the way you're interpreting the noise. But they all... Do you want me to show you? Yeah. yeah. So this is a symphonic. Crawford, where I was the Vice President of Wellness, mm -hmm. right? And I had an office, which was a studio like this, and I put the gong right in the middle. Yeah, that's so nice. <laughs> I love it. And, <laughs> and I had a massage area, and a coaching area, and a nap area, and a gong. Mm -hmm. And I just started playing. And people came after lunch for a little nap, and they would go back to work happy, mm -hmm. relaxed, focused, much more efficient, mm -hmm. and they didn't need coffee or cigarettes in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The gongs induce an altered state, so very quickly you go from being awake into lucid dream state. Mm -hmm. And that's the state you're in before you wake up in the morning. So, you know, have you ever experienced when you're lying in bed and you're, you know, you're, I don't know, you're trying to run away from a tiger or something and you want to so scream or run and you can't? Your legs don't move. Mm -hmm. That's theta. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your mind is still active, but your your body is complete jello. Mm -hmm. We put you right into theta in as little as one second. Mm -hmm. I've had some people. I've gone just boom, and they're out. <laughs> you know, it's instantaneous. And uh, but usually no more than 30 or 60 seconds, and you're out. And when you're in that state all your internal organs can operate freely. So your kidneys, your liver, your heart, everything is working at its peak and your immune system is more effective. And in the 70s, all the big rock bands had gongs. The overall benefit is deep relaxation. And when your body is relaxed and when all those energetic blocks are gone, then your energy flows freely and you're less likely to develop a disease. This is, this is what Hong Kong needs and this part of the world needs. It's simple. All you have to do as a participant is lie down on the floor and close your eyes. Mental health is, should be the number one concern of modern society. Mm -hmm. And that we talk about it a lot but not much is actually being done except prescribed medication. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe prescribing pills to hyperactive children mm -hmm. is the best solution. You know, Hong Kong people, they're busy, they're somewhat productive, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, you know, and they're stressed. 
and sometimes they are stressed because they always struggling on their career. As I know that apart yeah. from a Gong teacher, at the same time you're also uh, a different role in life. Like you're a, a career counselor, yeah. you're executive coach. Like what you said, you also uh, has been a vice president of uh, um, inline profit for the organization wellness. Yeah. And even though the founder of Namaskar Magazine, knows yeah, that I did that. Yeah. So much different things. <laughs> May I ask? Uh, do you have any suggestion for people who are struggling on their career? Yeah. At what point or how you decide which way to choose in your life, which path is the right one on the career? Mm. It all comes back to what Confucius said, what Lao Tzu said, um, and it's all about knowing thyself. Mm. So I created a module to help teenagers, specifically my children, decide what they wanted to do when they were 13. Mm -hmm. Because in school here, that's when they ask you what subjects you're going to take for your GCSEs, yeah. right? How do you know when you're 13? Mm -hmm. And it's really about taking a few hours and just sitting down and saying, well, what am I good at? What do I like to do? What kind of work environment do I work best in? Do I work best by myself? Do I work best, you know, in a team? Um, do I want to be active? Do I want to sit behind a desk and just be creative? Um, do I need variety? Do I really want to work in a corporate structure with a boss and a, and a hierarchy? And most people haven't got a clue. All right? You can start identifying themes in your, in your life. Uh, for instance, think of all the major successes in your life, things that you're particularly proud of. Right? If you had to write a book, what are the five things you put in it you know, that you'd want to share with people? And if you can use your strengths every day, you're going to be happier and motivated, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when a 29-year-old tells me that he wanted to be a gospel choir master, and I thought, wow, that's really cool, right? Now, and I'm like, what are you doing here? My mother told me I couldn't be one. I'm like, do you sing? Are you in a choir now? No. No, no. Completely lost all motivation for pursuing any aspect of his dream in any way, shape, or form. And that's really sad. No, truly, it's about understanding yourself, learning about themselves, and taking a little bit of time and saying, well, what do I like? I mean, it's a matter of understanding what you like to do and what you're good at, and then crafting a role where you make enough money to live a lifestyle of your choice. So it's not about having a job for life anymore. There's no job security whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You can't expect your employer to uh, take care of you, right? Yeah. You can be terminated at any second. So rather than being a victim, you know, what about choosing where you want to be? So it's finding a role that makes you feel fulfilled. Like here, people say, how can you do all this by yourself? And I'm like, it's not work. It's my passion. Mm -hmm. And not, every, you know, not everybody wants to work for Google. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody's cut out to be self-employed either. It's actually hard work, <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know and, and every role you take, take it as a learning opportunity. And if you don't, you know, if something doesn't work out or if you decide, well, okay, I've got that, now where can I go and get the next skill set? Or wh how can I augment what I already have? Apart from complain, what kind of uh, approach you would choose to cope with your stress? Okay, well, I, I have had a nervous breakdown mm -hmm. and I have been clinically depressed mm -hmm. in my lifetime so far. And for me, I decided that I did not want to take uh, medication mm -hmm. and at that time I started doing a lot of yoga mm -hmm. and it requires discipline I was traveling 14 countries at the time and had a vice president role in a multinational mm -hmm. I had two children that were about six and eight years old so yeah it was pretty challenging yeah. <laughs> but you know it, discipline and exercise works for me mm -hmm. all right and also talking to people. So learning to have conversations or having conversations with people like what we're doing now where you're not judging me, you're not saying, oh, I told you so, 
you know, you're not giving me advice, you're just listening. People want to be seen and heard. Or if you know that stresses you out, then you can possibly seek help before you get to that level of burnout. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, any important thing you haven't yet done in life which you would like to achieve? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What haven't I achieved? You know, many companies are putting meditation programs in place. And that's great. It's wonderful because you know, 10, 15 minutes of meditation, you, you'll sleep better. If you can have a steady practice every day, you sleep better and you need less sleep. Um, that's why I make these labyrinths, these patterns on the floor. The meandering path calms the mind and allows your intuition to speak to you. So it's a form of walking meditation. And these work beautifully for children. Children who use them regularly can reduce medication for ADD and ADHD. And my goal is to put one, okay, you asked me about my goals. My goal is to put one in every school. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'm seeking corporate sponsorship mm -hmm. um, so that we can work together with the schools in Hong Kong to at least give them a tool mm -hmm. that can help tackle stress and overload in, in children. So do you have any personal routine to balance your life? Yeah, um, I studied Kundalini Yoga and I get up at 6 every morning and I, I chant and then I do a yoga practice and then I do an 11 minute meditation every morning mm -hmm. and then I will have a light breakfast and then in the winter time, I go to the gym usually, or I will go to the swimming pool. I do distance swimming, mm -hmm. and then I come here. If you do 15 minutes of movement a day, you can prevent 80% of chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So just moving. So that could be walking to the MTR. It could be walking up the stairs, not taking the elevators all the time. And Hong Kong, we have the longest life expectancy for women in the world. Mm -hmm. But why are they so sick? Yeah. Okay, they're not exercising. Mm -hmm. Could you give our audience three tips um, on how to live their life consciously? Starting to d develop a practice that works for you and maintain it. And there's many different practices out there that you can choose from, whether it's seated meditation, whether it's even singing, you know, but something that um, gets you in touch with yourself and allows you to become still, at least in your thoughts. All right? So, journaling's a very good one. Yoga, yes, but not the power yoga. You know, something more yin yoga or something that's slower. Um, meditation, yes. Uh, you can do seated meditation. You can do walking meditation. We, we do a lot of chanting. When you shift energetically, then people around you change as well. Mm -hmm. And things start to happen. You know, be moderate. Okay, so everything in moderation, because you know you think, oh, I'm going to start this new diet, I'm going to do this, whatever, and you fail after a week, mm -hmm. right? Pushing too hard. Yeah. So understanding your limitations, um, and you know, starting small. If you're going to make changes in your life, start small, mm -hmm. but at least have a goal. It's very important to have a goal, mm -hmm. and. You can always shift it, right? You can always change. I mean, I've been a marine biologist. I have done medical research. I've got a you know, business degree. Um, so I've done publishing, medication. underwater photojournalism, you know, headhunter, you know. And in Hong Kong in particular, if you set your mind to it, you can make it happen. You know, become part of a community, you know, and, and Humans are not meant to be isolated. We're meant to be part of a bigger thing, yeah. all right? And statistically, we need at least five social interactions a day, mm -hmm. okay? And 
That could be talking to people, etc. But learn to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. All right. Texting doesn't count. Yeah. All right. And get rid of the iPhone or get rid of the gizmos and start having real relationships with other people. Maintaining connections, developing connections with others. Mm -hmm. And giving of yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a Boy Scout leader, so we do a lot of community service work. And the kids grow in many ways just by helping other people. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah? curious, okay. uh, why you and your uh, all the gong teacher or the player mm -hmm. are all dressed in white. Ah. Well, um, in Kundalini, we wear white. Mm -hmm. And white is a, a pure color. White is, think about it, white is angelic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And white contains all the other colors. And if you wear white, your aura expands. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You know, think about. Amal Clooney on her, in her wedding photos, that white suit she wore. Yeah? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Beautiful. Stunning, right? You could be that, you know? If, because when you wear white, everybody notices. Okay. All right? But traditionally, if you're doing energy healing, you always wear white because it's a pure color. Mm -hmm. And it, it signifies purity, it's neutral as well. Mm -hmm. And when you're working with energy, you want to be neutral. You don't want to be giving off um, anything less than neutral. Yeah? Yeah. I think white could be the new fashion, yes. I hope so. I mean, even at Lane Crawford, I, I used to recommend it to many of the, the senior women uh, executives, and they started wearing white. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. You know, things, it was, you know, people treat you different. So we have talked about different things, the gong, the career, consciousness, mm. how to live our life, even how to wear our fashion <laughs> color. <laughs> so really, for nice. so happy yeah. to have you here. Oh, well thank yes, you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>